What do South Korean people think of Americans? Greasy foods and being fat. Hello everyone and welcome back again to another recap of 90 Day Fiance. Today we're going to do a recap of the latest episode to have and to hold. Nikki and Igor embark on a romantic getaway that Igor has planned and if she behaves, Igor will allow her to jump his bones. They are having a glass of wine. Maybe you're getting beautiful with every mind. Shut up. <laughs> and honestly, this guy has the power to say the most stupid stuff in the most awkward moments. If your partner gets more beautiful the more alcohol you drink, do you really find your partner attractive? I need to test sleep. No, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. And there it is. The Nikki that we all know jumping on Igor's bones every chance she gets. Last night, we have the second chance of our love. After the wine they had last night, they had their second sex session. On their first Day during the getaway, they are cooking, and Nikki asks the cook, Do any Moldovan men cook gatorget for the woman? Gatorget for the woman in Moldova? <laughs> well, yes, they do when they're trying to surprise you. That's what she says. Igor tells us that in Moldova, uh, the woman is a great cook and they keep house clean and support the man many things. And oh. then you want to make love with that woman. So I'm pretty sure he wants a very, very old school, traditional woman. And he's definitely not gonna find it with Nikki. Nikki is by far the least, least traditional woman. Nikki is still upset because even though they had sex, it was at 3 a.m. in the morning. I think it's so selfish the way his mind thinks on his time to make love to me not special to me you can never make nikki happy and also i guess this is not enough for her are we even surprised igor is also the king of the vibes this vibe that because now he says that he's getting man vibes from nikki that like literally the thing in my head is that is because i'm trans it's true Yes, it's something new for me with my mind. Then another issue is that Igor doesn't have the word engage on his social media, but right away he goes on his Facebook and changes his status to engage. Risk a lot for Nikki because I love her. Nikki is my choice of life. And if somebody judge me, I say goodbye for that. Who is this man? I cannot even recognize him. Tomorrow. The next day, they go wine tasting, more like wine drinking, and they get messed stuff. Both of them become incredibly drunk and messy. And by messy, I mean very touchy with multiple sexual comments in front of the manager. I think that we were all the manager at a point. Pink like what, baby? Mm, pink like your lips, I think. Exactly. Both of them. How do you guys feel about people acting like this in public places? Let me know down in the comments. Then, hungover from the day before, they go have some breakfast. Oh, I'm excited for horseback riding today. I wish I was riding a horse. <laughs> Nikki. Good old Nikki. She reminds me of that uncle, like that creepy old uncle. You're always trying to avoid in family gatherings because he's always making dirty comments or dirty jo jokes that are not funny. So Igor tells her- Not only you want to sex. Sometimes I want to sex. Really? Yes, but stop push, push me. Are you not happy we had sex two days in a row? Is that not enough for you? Seriously, stop pushing him then nikki asked him will you rather be friends because we are barely having sex but friends don't have sex and igor says well over here we do and this leads to nikki asking is there anyone since we've been talking that you had sex with slept with i mean now is the time to tell me i'm not gonna judge you this is a trap don't fall for it. It's a trap. It's a trap. But he does. Um, 
baby, since I gave you this ring, no. I said to you after this ring, I'm clear, Nikki. Babe, this is better than masturbating. <laughs> so while Nikki was applying for the visa, Igor was out there in someone else's pants. And Nikki is not happy because now she feels like the reason they don't have sex is because he's had sex with other people woman don't hate the player hate the game or the preview they are arguing about her visa and she's packing but i'm pretty sure she's not leaving him now off to sophie and rob they're getting ready to go bowling and rob is very excited because he wants to see the butt jiggle there's a there's a reflex jiggle when they get there rob's friends ask sophie while she's going through rob's phone Sophie is caught off guard and she asked him, did he not tell you? And he was like, you know, sexting them like back and telling them like, oh, like your asses are so amazing, this, that. Bro, you ain't telling us all that. You was asking for the ass and Everyone, please give a round of applause to the friends for calling out his bullshit. I'm forming an opinion, an unfair opinion based off of what you're giving I don't me. Know. Of course, he deliberately left out information because it doesn't benefit him later on sophie calls her friend and tells her i'm finally going to tell rob i am by and the moment has finally come right before they're going to go ring shopping sophie tells him i have something to tell you but she starts to have an anxiety attack and storms out then he sits next to her and she says it's nothing bad yeah. nothing about being disloyal still loyal nothing has changed I'm gonna say it very quickly and bye. We have a solid six seconds of silence. And for the preview, we get one gross man. He's a menace to the entire city. Telling her. If my girl gets to somebody else, then I get no, to somebody you else. Never, you will never get to so someone else in my whole better, life. I will never be okay with that. Then neither Even will you. Even you saying it's disgusting. I will never be okay with that. I think he's only looking for ways to get in someone else's pants. And that's probably why he made that comment. Are you guys ready for a new couple? Because I am not, but let's do this. We finally get to meet Citra and Sam. My name's Sam. I'm from Cameron, Missouri. I am 30 years old. We find out he's in recovery and when he turned 22, he got clean but did relapse a couple times. And now he wants to make sure that he stays clean. Because my fiance is coming soon. Her name's Citra. She's 26 and from West Java, Indonesia. He met Citra in an online dating app. She was very easy to talk to, has accepted his past, and most importantly... I love a nice big butt. She's got that big butt. Now, two years ago, Sam flew out to Indonesia to meet Citra face to face. Even though he didn't have money for a ring, he got down on one knee and proposed to her. Like a big old door. Hey, Michael. Are you being serious? Yes, I mean. <laughs> Ladies, can you let me know how you feel about getting a proposal with no ring? While we're on the topic of commitment, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't yet and commit to helping me make more of this for you. Because you know, I will, baby girl. I can't wait. <laughs> I will wait, but I can't. <laughs> Later on, Citra meets her sisters and she tells us that she was a bit unsure about Sam at first because he had a baby, well, he has a baby face. And she also tells us that religion and family are very important factors in her life. And just last year, she lost her mother. They are so important that she has already asked Sam to convert to the Islamic religion. And he has agreed. Muslim faith is very important to me. I told him before we are getting serious. If you want to get married with me, you need to convert to Islam. Even though Sam grew up very religious, his dad is now an atheist. And we also find out that because Citra's dad is worried they'll have sex before marriage, he is flying out. My dad will come a few days after me. A few days? To watch them 
24-7. Me and Citra have not had sex yet. Took the fear of her dad to keep that from happening. Citra also breaks the news to us that they don't have 90 days to marry. They only have 14 dates. Yes, you heard that right. 14 days right after the dad arrives. Seriously, that's not enough time. Tick tock, motherfucker! Now off to Devin and Nick. Devin and Nick are driving to Cersei now, and Nick takes the time to tell us that when he thinks of America... He City like New York, but he talks about Cersei, which is very that's different what from... most of America is. And when they arrive, there's way more than just the parents in the house. There's seven people in the house, which is not going to make things weirder. Devin decides to show Nick around the town. Look at this art mural I made a long time ago. This White House and this Confederate statue. So is this is the uh, soldier who was fighting for the having a slave? Right. Okay. That's, that's, okay. Okay. Literally the same reaction that I will have. Is anyone here scared for Nick or is it only me? After the entire family meeting Nick, mom and dad tell us that they really like, like Nick because he's very helpful, but that opinion would change quickly. What do South Korean people think of Americans? Greasy food and being fat. He's so proud of this statement and tries to save it, but then he bucks it up again by saying this. You are lazy, so you always get the uh, fast food for lunch. No wonder you are piggy. Look at this. I honestly feel so bad for poor Devin because the fact that she has tried multiple times and he won't listen to her and stop calling her Piggy is heartbreaking. The Piggy nickname is something that has been a very long ongoing battle that I've very much given up on. I think the parents are worried, but what can you do other than have a conversation with him? Because at the end of the day, it is Devin's choice to be with him. And for the preview, we see Devin crying after trying her wedding dress on. And it is very hard not to think it's because of Nick. We move on to Manuel and Ashley. After Manuel ran away because of Ashley venting out all of the personal problems, Ashley's friend is making sure to tell her not to run after him. But she ain't even moving. You know what? I'm not following you anymore. Fight I'm done. over it. Bye. Megan, come back to the bar. No! They're calling him a man-child, but he was also disrespected, so it's hard not to side with him on this. In Manuel's confession, he says it is very difficult for him to have a conversation with people that don't understand his situation. Once Ashley gets back home, she's like, Manuel, why, don't you, why do you need to run away? We need to talk. And he quickly tells her, you need to stop telling everybody our business and I'm done arguing with you. And he goes to play to watch his soccer game. Eve to think that Manuel would apologize for being a jerk to my friends and running off. And can I marry somebody who wants nothing to do with my friends, but also wants me to have nothing to do with his family? Maybe both of you need to apologize to each other, but mainly Ashley, I believe. And then when it comes to the family subject, I completely understand how she feels because it does seem like he's hiding her. But in regards to the friends, there's a certain there's certain things that you should keep between you and your partner. And I don't agree with her on this. But OK, we already knew that they made out and now Manuel is going to try his very first garbage play. And he doesn't seem too excited. Los primeros 30 días pasé que es el 60% en el baño. Since he has had stomach problems since he arrived to the US. As they start talking about the wedding, we find out the wedding is going to take place in Florida. And of course, they need to buy plane tickets and other things, which is going to cost them a pretty penny. Manuel does not like this idea at all. I literally hate when you make that face. It's such a stank ass face. Literally, 
Ashley is mad about the face that he's making, but what else is she expecting him to do when he still needs to send money to his family? And she's choosing to spend all this money on something that could have wait. They go to the lake later on, and Manuel looks so, so happy to be there. And Ashley has already made up her mind that there's issues that cannot be resolved. So might as well just wait until after the wedding. What a nice way to start a marriage. I understand how important it is for Manuel to send money back to his family. I totally get it. But still decided to have a tantrum at the candle making place? Does not make sense. Manuel wants Ashley to understand how difficult it is to see her spend so much money, but now want to send money to his family. I'm really glad that you're telling me this because it helps me understand you a bit more. These are conversations that should have taken place before he arrived, but what better time now, right? Manuel tells Ashley this entire Florida wedding is a lot of money and he has always supported his family and wants her to understand how hard it is for him to not be able to do it. ¿Qué piensa si ahorita enviar 100 dólares a ellos y podemos empezar hablando sobre enviándole más dinero a ellos después de la boda? Finally, they have agreed on something Manuel doesn't seem too happy about it, but he accepts it for what it is. Está bien, para ti. Bueno, son gracias. And this right here was one of the first interactions where I truly saw love coming out of both of them. Realmente la quiero, la amo a ella. Y me estoy casando con ella por amor. And as Ashley says, maybe they should come here every day so Manuel is happy. That was it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you so much for all the new people. I really appreciate you guys' support, and I hope that we can continue to grow this community to an even bigger community. Bye, and also, happy December.